Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card. So today's pick a card is to celebrate what is fantastical, different, divergent, mercurial, strange, wonderful within you and possibly something that maybe you've kept a little bit under wraps because you're or only shown to very close people because you're not sure whether it'll fit in in conservative environments or whatever it might be. But the things that really make you unique and wonderful, that's what we want to look at and celebrate today. And the inspiration for this came from a very specific thing. And, and I want to talk just briefly about this at the beginning because it's particularly if you see this video at the time that it is published, what I'm going to talk about is very relevant if you're interested in the Kickstarter campaign I'm going to talk about. So there's a Kickstarter campaign at the time that I, that I published this live on Kickstarter. The details are in the description box below for the companion oracle deck for the cute and creepy tarot. So anybody who is is familiar with my channel, I think, will have seen the cute and creepy tarot more than once. It's one of my favorite tarots. I think it has the most amazing artwork. And the oracle deck, which is the companion for this, uses very similar artwork and similar sort of themes and so forth. And it's done by a wonderful tattoo artist called Misha Nagelvort. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Misha, if you see this, uh, apologies if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. But she, as I say, created the cute and creepy tarot and now she has an oracle deck that is currently funding on Kickstarter. At the time that I am filming this, it's doing well, going towards its goal, and I'm very optimistic. As a fan of her work, I'm very much hoping that it does get funded. But I wanted to do my little bit, you know, to basically publicise it. I have no affiliation with Misha or with her campaign. There's sort of nothing like that. It's just I'm a genuine fan of her work. I love the cute and creepy tarot. I really want the companion oracle deck. So I thought, why not do a reading coming off, in a sense, the principles of design that she used for this as a way of celebrating the, the Kickstarter and letting people know about it. And because I do know that some people who come to my my channel do like the decks and do sometimes go and get them themselves and so forth. So I just wanted to let you know if you didn't know that it was happening. And if you're seeing this sometime later, the, the connections to her her website and also to the Kickstarter, often on Kickstarters, even after they're closed, there'll be details about how to get decks after the campaign. So Hopefully that will be helpful for anybody who, like me, is a fan of this art. But the reason that this particular topic came from it is because of the the kind of what I understand is part of Misha's uh, inspiration herself in the original cute and creepy tarot, which, as I understand it, had to do with reclaiming for the sort of various mythical creatures, sometimes monsters, sometimes creatures out of horror stories, as well as sort of mythical ghost stories and all sorts of things. That's sort of their, their place in the sun, so to speak. You're know, looking at what they were from a more positive sort of aspect and so forth. And I just thought, what a wonderful idea. And yeah, because I think we all have parts of ourselves that we're not sure it fits in. And, and so I thought if I use her deck, then that becomes a really good sort of way of depicting exactly the energy. And the energy of this reading is going to be fun and it's going to be fantastical. So there'll be, we'll talk a bit about where it hits your 3D world, you know, where it's relevant, but I'm really just trying to celebrate what is different, unique, beautiful, fantastical within you. And so to give you an idea of what she did in her design and therefore how the, the pile choice is here and, and the sort of spirit of what I'm looking at uncovering for you in this reading, and I'll just put down the numbers as I always do, is that each character within the whole deck is some sort of mythical character, fantastical character. And as I say, she's sort of like revolutionising the view of it and, and aligning it with the tarot. So <clears throat> these cards will be in part of the beginning of the reading and then I'll be using the whole deck. So I'll be shuffling these cards into the deck for the first reading and then finding them again as we go through each reading so that all the cards are available for the reading itself. But it also will be part of what what I think the reading will say, though there will be other cards to work out what this unique, wonderful energy you have is. So to give you an idea of what she did with this, because I think it's really interesting. So for the High Priestess, she chose a Japanese ghost. So if you look at the card carefully, you'll see that the head and the head is sort of detached from the body in this particular Japanese ghost, which is called Nukubi. Nuka Kubi. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
And so she chose her because that detachment of the head from the body represented to her the high priestess's ability to cross between the worlds of the known and the unknown. So something that might have been seen as a bit scary is then sort of reframed as, as a very special talent. So if you think some of your fantastical energy is around moving between the worlds, that may be something that draws you to this. Of course, choose however you want. If you usually just go for a number or you just meditate in, that's fine. But I just thought it was worth showing you the the, the design concepts here because it, it, may, it will be part of what I look at when I'm looking at each of these. For the second uh, pile, we have the moon, which is obviously a werewolf. So that's the sort of concept she says about the sort of need to look at both the conscious and unconscious and deal with the animal nature, like get all of those things into balance and know how to control those, but also be able to access the wild within. For pile number three, we have the four of wands there. That's, that's representing Kitsune, which is a Japanese sort of fox god. So... One that that you know is well known sort of as a trickster and a support and and you know, kind of a, a creature that leads you into the mysteries and so forth and quite a fortunate and lucky creature by and large as well too and she's depicting it as part of the mythology where he married his divine counterpart I guess so there's that sort of energy about human not humanizing but showing that sort of connection for that sort of a creature. And then almost my favourite of the four that I chose is the Six of Cups version she has here, which is the Loch Ness Monster. And what I love about that is that she's showing how she loved that, that sort of mythology when she was young. And she has this vision of the Loch Ness Monster getting a tea party ready for children, you know, for the, the kids in the neighbourhood picking up the Six of uh, Cups sort of concept of childhood and innocence and so forth so instead of being this sort of strange scary amphibian amphibian sort of creature Loch Ness or Nessie as she's often called is is doing a tea party so I just love the energy of this deck it's just so different and and so in keeping with what we're talking about here so yes anything around sort of mercurial trickster energy anything around nostalgia you know, and, and community there, anything around the wild, anything around going between the worlds may be something that helps you choose and that'll be part of the energy that I think is in the reading, but there'll be more than that. So you don't have to be taken just by that. But when you know what reading or readings, and by all means go to more than one if you would like, when you know what reading or readings you want to go to, as always, the timestamps are in the description box below and I'll see you there. Welcome part one to your reading. So I suppose I should have expected straight off the bat if you have come for the High Priestess or been drawn to the deck anyway or the reading anyway with the High Priestess that we're going to have something that's pretty profound on a spiritual level. So in terms of sort of general archetypes, we've got things connecting to your past lives, to your kind of inner goddess and that also connects to in the Fae Volva which is about prophecy guidance and a real sense of true self and not giving up self except for when it is with the right people and finding the soul kin finding the right people very strong emotional sort of connection to everything but but a capacity probably here with clear audience to hear clearly to understand to be able to read between the lines maybe a great facility with languages actually or symbolic language if you aren't literally a linguist you may be sort of someone who is very good with symbolic information synchronicities and so forth <clears throat> and a sense of being able to see and tend for and take the future forward but do it with a very strong sense of emotional connection so with the high priestess herself obviously as you know she or as i'm sure you would know if you're coming to tarot reading she is she is the connection, the intuitive connection. She, she downloads information from spirit, all of that sort of thing. There is very much within this, as I say, a kind of divine feminine. And, and it's interesting, Volva is, is able to have relationships, is able to connect, but will only do it with the right people, only with those, I think, that are at your level. And very likely soul twin, soul connections, divine counterparts, that sort of energy with the soul kin also turning up so something about your fantastic sort of fantastical otherworldly larger than life different sort of energy is this sort of very strong understanding and very strong conviction about 
who is it right to connect with and who isn't it right to connect with and how you can be in your power and you have a lot of power particularly empathic power and as I say maybe clear audience as well to to find your people to know who your people are and you don't give up you do not settle with persistence with silver here you will rather move through relationships and move them on then really connect to something that is lesser than than who you are and what you are looking for and so forth but you know you don't rush into things now this may well be that you have before to try and fit in to to try and find a love or whatever and you become very clear on the idea that you can't do that that that's not going to satisfy you that you are too much of a inner goddess and you don't have it's not this is not about gender but too much of that sort of energy to just settle and you're able to see and hear and and get towards the future you actually have a really good understanding of consequential thinking on a kind of 3d level <clears throat> with a sort of prophetic ability of the high priestess you really do know what's coming at least for yourself and for those that you're close to maybe on a broader level as well too and you have a very strong instinct it's almost like I hear this, you know, like what I'm hearing with this sort of like clear audience or something is, as I say, something like language or, or concepts or symbols. It's almost as though you hear that in the words of people, the language that they use, the culture they come from, even the sort of way that they frame what they say and how they think. There's something like that, that that is like a memory that connects you and makes you know this is my kind. So probably I would suspect of all the readings that I'm going to do in today's set of readings, you're the one most likely to find your your tribe easily or relatively easily because part of this reading was probably to celebrate where you might be so different that you feel that is hard to find and then then identifying and articulating what it is. But you're already pretty pretty spot on with that emotionally and also, as I say, sort of intellectually. But you may be going through a process where you can feel it coming, but it's not here yet. So to so to celebrate who you are and to bring that in, it's it's to own that, to own that understanding, to own the fact that that you really are in tune with who you are. You probably actually probably you have a very good sense of past life recall. I mean, many people will go and do past life regressions. I think if you did, it'd be likely to be very accurate. So, you know, others, I think, you know, it's hard to know. Is it is it what we sort of seen on TV or read or whatever, or is it is it accurate? You know, and, I, and I don't mean that to put anybody down. I just think it can be difficult to know. But I think for you, you're very spot on about this. And I suspect you may have known and had senses of things even when you were very young, long before you could have been influenced by sort of something that you would read or TV or anything like that. So, and in meditation and things like that, you would get to the depths of that as well. It's a very strongly emotional thing. You hear it and then you respond on an emotional level and it's like a really finely tuned radar. So you really are an intuitive, an empath, a probably you know, a sort of precognitive person as well too. And you are meant to meet these people. So let's see then what else Spirit wants to say about what is larger than life or fantastical about you. And then we're going to look at how you can best honour that and then maybe what part of it you're not seeing. So firstly, a little bit more detail on the fantastical and imaginative and wonderful and different and divergent pile one, please, Spirit. My goodness, you're strong. That's I would definitely say that. Quite apart from things, you are really strong. Not only do we have strength here with the Queen of Wands, you do know who you are. You are so much this goddess energy, as I say, regardless of whatever, whatever gender you identify with. You very much know who you are, and that is part of your strength. You really don't take any prisoners. You may, because you know how to listen and how to be in environments, you may not always show this to people, but you definitely know when you're around your own people, and you definitely know when you're not. And so you're very strong, and, and people recognize that in you. They see you as someone very charismatic, very clear on who they are. I actually get, because of that, 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 and with the water and so forth energy, I think you may draw people to you who copy you a bit. You may be a bit of a role model and sometimes sometimes you're going to have to sift through whether the copying, whether it is genuinely your soul kin or is it people who are trying to emulate being you. So there's a little bit of the, the backlash of charisma that you have to be aware of there where people can get very needy around you, but you can also help liberate them and liberate others. You know, you don't, this energy of sort of being stuck that the hangman can bring, 
with the eight of wands, you can liberate that. Probably likely to do it very artistically as well. I feel like you may create in some way. Certainly you think and move through things quickly. You would pick up the cues in a conversation because of like this past life knowledge that you've brought through quicker than anyone. Like you're, you're probably the sort of person who in, in a group knows three or four steps ahead what's actually going to come up in that conversation because you've already picked up the subtle cues that have happened already. Others others are still kind of in each moment thinking it through. And, and actually what it makes me think of is that they say often people when they listen, they're only listening to work out what they're going to say next. So they only half hear what's happening. You really hear what's happening because you'll be quick enough to say whatever you need to when you need to. You don't need to plan it. You're really focusing in on and understanding and this is part of your strength. This is why people then will start to mimic you. I think you will find that people will mimic you. So one of the challenges for you about being truly different is not having a lot of copycats. And also one of the challenges about finding the right relationships to connect with is the same thing. So let's see how you can best honour this difference that you have for your best outcome, part one. Wow. So I do think this is really underlying to me that you will get certain pretenders around you. There is there is one of the things you have to do to honor it is is face the pain that is associated with with when the what you're hearing because all these swords they feel like the hearing, the listening, the language is is causing you anxiety, is making you feel like you've got to step out and say something. Certainly not staying in environments where you don't feel that you can speak your truth is part of this because it, it's just going to make you feel more and more anxious if you do do that. So, but, so being prepared to leave that if that is necessary. But I think it's also being prepared to leave people when they aren't quite, you know, using the vulva energy here of really seeing that, that it would be better to be alone than with the wrong person. That's how you honour it. And, and it's all through what you hear, what you listen, what you speak and moving quickly, balancing that. And the good thing is, there's a lot about the mind here, but you also have water. So this is head and heart. You are actually able to balance that and move forward, but only if you honor it by saying, I have my standards. I, I don't just fit in with other people. So I think that's the main thing because I think that you're going to get a lot of followers and you're, you're just going to need to be a little bit, not ruthless, but clear in your boundaries. So let's ask what you could be not seeing. What's hidden underneath your fantastical self that maybe you're not seeing at the moment, but could be useful to see? Okay. So this is picking up the challenge that we're seeing there about honouring it. What you don't necessarily see, but it takes its toll on you, takes its toll on your strength, on your inner goddess, all of that sort of thing, is the emotional cost, I think, of the choices when, when you are burdened by what other people want. So, I mean, I think your this group is, is the people who are very charismatic, whose difference is already seen in some way, though I don't think people understand it. You know what it is, but I don't think most people understand it. They just kind of think, oh, that's the way to be, to be powerful, or that's the way to be, to be charismatic. And and you've done it through understanding who you are and listening and understanding the nuances of relationships and so forth and, and having really high standards. But I think that, that I think you draw these people to you and I think you genuinely feel it within because you're quite empathic if you're having to put boundaries around if they aren't the right people. Over here, Volva knows that she should not be with the wrong people, but I think that you have a very sympathetic side to you. And so I think this is actually showing that you may not fully know the toll that it takes on you to be kind of the the almost the fill-in mother for people in a way. And it's not saying that people see you as mother per se, but I feel as though they see you as an icon. And so they draw on you in that way. And it's very, very hard to deal with that and make the decisions about about where the connections are right. So I think this is why we had the, the thing really attuning to watch and listen carefully. That's what you do naturally, but it's saying you've got to ramp it up one more level and you've got to do it in such a way that you work out where where are those sort of like intellectual differences? Where is it not going to fit? Because you can't be the 
the muse and the icon to everybody. You have this very, very powerful energy. It's very wonderful, but it is meant to be doing something in the world with your people. So, so I think it's hard for you. You just take on this burden of like looking after everybody else and being the sort of the, the, the mature one in the room and that kind of thing. So that's, that's what spirit wants you to think about with your, your fantastical energy. So let's get you some help on the path because that's always easier said than done. So we're going to get some animal totems. We're going to get a creature from a deck about the lonely woods because there's always something that's a little bit isolated and lonely in, in being different. And then we're also going to get you some goddess or archetype energy to support you in, in celebrating what you are and in, and in getting this balance right so that you really you don't, you don't eat into your strength. You can really find your people and be who you're meant to be in this life. So a couple of divine animals for you. The owl, wisdom. Yeah, because you do have wisdom. So the owl is around you, and the owl is a very strong, I think, sign and, and animal totem for the high priestess anyway. It makes a lot of sense. And Minerva may be a goddess energy that you really relate to as well. But I think that it is about wisdom. It is about making the wise choices. So I think owl will help you with that. And armadillo groundedness now isn't that interesting because the way that the high priestess is depicted in this as i said in the introduction is with her head separated from her her body and the reasoning from the designer of the tarot deck was to sort of say moving between the worlds and i think that's very true you would move between the worlds that's part of that high priestess energy that you have it's part of the connection to soul kin and so forth and I think even move between levels of this world because I feel like there's sort of ground and then there's water that you go into. I think armadillo here is, is to help you really bring this into the material and understand the implications of it. Because it's almost, pole one, like you are on this journey to find your people and you're excited and you're very, very you know attractive to people and you're very strong and all of those things. But you could get almost carried away with it and take on everybody. You have to ground the energy and work out with the wisdom what are the right people for you? Let's get you a companion on the lonely path or a companion energy on the lonely path or a, or a message from the lonely path to help you get that balance of wisdom and, and grounding in, in this energy. When all seems ended. Okay, so this, this is doing something to the death card here. So this may be saying that people who've come here, you've, you've had to sort of cut very people various people out of your life and that has taken its toll it's been really hard or you've thought that you found the one or your soul twin your soul kin and then you find that it isn't and this you're getting more and more you're attuning your radar more and more this energy seems to be being picked up here when all seems ended it's it's a companion to give you the support to to pick yourself up and move on and remember you are very strong but it is partly about relieving the burden the burden of being all things to all people on a kind of emotional or nurturing level you you need to really use your clear audience your sense of language symbolism and so forth to be a little bit more discerning because you're using up too much of this amazing energy you have it is amazing but it needs to be with the right people because otherwise the ones who are kind of drawing from you they're not even necessarily understanding it the people who are the right people for you will understand it and they will help you grow as well as you help them Okay, so let's get you a couple of either goddesses or archetypes to also help you. And I think we're starting to see the re real key thing here for you. Your fantastical energy is this amazing sense of self, this amazing understanding of people, this sense of how you fit into the flow of all your lives and your, your very persistent, strong drive to find your people. But it's so attractive that you're really having to sort through it. So let's, let's see what else we get in terms of support for you. Demeter, okay, and the Shadow Master, okay. So Demeter, interestingly, is the mother of Persephone, and people often also attribute the High Priestess to Persephone. You often see in certain decks that she has a pomegranate, which is what she ate in the underworld, which meant she had to keep going back. There is a maternal energy around you. It's either Demeter literally as a spiritual thing, or it could be a, you know, a very strong nurturing figure in your life. And they can actually take up some of the slack here. So it's it's either to put it to Demeter, say, I can't be the Empress for everybody, because the Empress card in many ways is Demeter. 
So, but it's reversed here, remember? So this is what you're not seeing. You're, you're losing the energy that's being drained out of you there. But she's a very strong goddess for you and I think a support for you. So draw on her energy and or there may be literally someone who is personifying that in your life. And that's part of your soul kin if that's the case. And don't be afraid to to go for counsel on that level or to pass some of the burden on. The shadow master says that that you are going to the depths sometimes. You are doing the Persephone sort of journey and you are more than capable of doing that and finding your way out. So I think it, they're both here to sort of say, if you think about it, they both say the same thing in a way. Demeter called Persephone back. She did the bargain with Hades and that's why we have spring and summer. So, and the shadow master can go through the labyrinth and find the way out. So for any of you who are feeling a bit overwhelmed by who you are and trying to find your people and trying to not be cruel, trying to be supportive, but not be depleted in too much of a way, these, these energies will help you with that, part one. So let's have a look then at your spiritual magic. As I said, this is meant to be fantastical and you've got a lot of spiritual magic. So we're just going to use three different decks just to get a little bit more information on your spiritual magic in relation to what makes you fantastical and different. So, alliance, important partnerships, agreements or unexpected connections bring fortunate opportunities. I think there's a couple of things there. I think it is, I think for some of you, as I say, there's a Demeter figure. There's a, a an Empress figure. There's a nurturing figure. I think for others with past life, soul, quick in and vulva looking for the right person, there may be a divine counterpart coming in. So that may be something that you are drawing in. And it's another reason why it's important to be listening for the right signs and not giving too much to everybody else because you need to find that connection. Then we also have heart magic. Yeah, create your world from your heart. It's your magic wand in the universe. So there's something about love. There's something about finding the right partner. Probably someone with, with past life connections. But that's what Volva is looking for. That's where it becomes reasonable to share the energy and be in a partnership. So there's definitely something about that for you in this life. Then looking at some other magical energy from two other decks. So firstly from one guardian ah yeah and that's falling with Demeter so I definitely think for many of you Demeter is around you pay attention to that and maybe Minerva I feel and euphoria honor yourself yeah honor yourself and then this is the whole message of this reading which is about honoring what's amazing but I think that, that what is amazing in you Instead of isolating you from people, it's drawn people to you and not always the ones that are going to be reciprocating an energy. Not necessarily people who mean harm, but people who just drain your energy. So that's why you need the guardian, you need the support, you need to have that source of nurturing because you're doing, consciously or unconsciously, a lot of that for other people. So to finish off, let's just get some astrology or numerology energy about what makes you fantastical. And then we're going to use the Enchanted Blossoms deck, which has dragon butterflies. And there's not much more that could be more magical and fantastical than that to give you a final sort of message to sum up the reading. So firstly, just some astrology or numerology energy for you, Paul. One. Gemini. There's the mind. There's the communication skill. That's that's the way. That's how you're going to find this out. And don't be worried about you know having to wear masks if you need to to find the right people. Uranus, yeah, change energy, bringing the new. And again, something quite brilliant, something quite different. And stellium. So we'll have to look at what the planets are for that. So this is a three or more planets. We'll do three for this that are in the same house, close together same sign across houses that sort of thing but I think it's most astrologers would say it needs to be in the same house so we'll just look at that it's about the combination of energies so I'm just going to get three planets to see what they are for you as well but definitely highly original and extremely good communicator as I often say bear with me till I get the planet sun so life path you're on the right life path and all that fiery queen of wands energy makes sense So it can sometimes take a little bit of time to get planets. 
Moon, sun and moon. Oh, yeah. Okay. For many of you, that's that's a direct confirmation that some of this is about, some of your fantastical thing will be to bring in some form of divine partnership. That's the alchemical mar marriage. Yeah, and Venus. Yeah, definitely. Definitely it's saying it. It's also why you can't give all your energy to everybody because you are meant to be sort of almost like a, a radio station tuning into the frequency of the person. If you haven't already met them, if you have met them, then you need to be able to spend more time with them, I think. So to finish this off, as I say, I'm just going to draw one uh, dragon butterfly for an energy or a message to kind of synthesize the, the, the promise of the fantastical you, part one. Endurance. So that goes to the persistence. And you know, the thing that's interesting about that, I mean, because I think you will find love and all of those sort of things. And, I, and so I don't think endurance is sort of just saying, you know, everything is just about that. But it is showing that strength of Vulva. It is showing the strength of the goddess. It is showing that sort of sense with past life that you're talking about things over a very long span over a number of lifetimes and and building that strength and that's i think what draws a lot of people to you your capacity to persist your capacity to see it through to never give up but you do have to go to your guardians and your sort of supports and so forth because this is a marathon for you pile one you you are very powerful you are meant to do amazing things i think and many people will follow you but you're also meant to find your people and in particular your person i think and that will take some persistence because a lot of people are going to want to be that person and there's only one that can be. So I hope that, that that really resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Other than that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Paul, to your reading. So we have the moon card that will have drawn you to the reading, which in itself in this deck, as I said, sort of speaks of the capacity to look at the primal nature and also the conscious and unconscious and more classically in tarot to be looking at secrets, what is different, all of that kind of thing. And there's a lot that's different. And this whole reading was about what is different and fantastical, but you guys are really different and fantastical, I have to say. And it's not necessarily by the looks of things, this way of being is not necessarily always going to be easy. And it's going to have some interesting sort of, I think, relationship challenges to it. But on another level, you guys are here for a reason. I've been thinking over and over, I have to say, with readings that I've been doing for the collective, and this really gives me the same feeling, that we are heading into something very, very different in the next 10 years. And there are people who have been incarnated to be part of that. And I think the people who've come to this reading are part of that, and in a very particular way, or in actually almost two particular ways. Firstly, when we look at the two cards from the Kitsune Oracle, We've actually got sort of Inara, which is the goddess of, of who Kitsune serves. And we've also got a sort of helper and so forth. So within that, that broader sort of mythology. But this is talking about your soul's journey, you know, rising on the, the peach blossom tree here of immortality and understanding you are enough and you don't have to be perfect in some preordained way. And in fact, you couldn't be. You have to be perfect in your own way because you are a bringer of change. And this is what I think. I think souls are coming in that are a bringer of change. And it means probably that you will have been misunderstood. Like you'll have resonated to that part of the introduction, definitely. Because what you have is so new that in some ways, it's a bit like trying to imagine a different color. If you really try and imagine a color that you haven't already seen, just try and do that at some point. You'll see what I mean. It's almost impossible to do. There's something about your nature, but it is about your spiritual development. It is about what your soul is. And, and it's been developed over eons and lifetimes, definitely. But it's time to be reborn in this form that, that has its, its place on the world stage in whatever that means to you, in whatever this change is. With the Yule Singer, the Yule Singer comes for the rebirth of self. And I think you've been had many, many incarnations, actually. Very old soul. But this is time to almost be reborn in who you really are. I feel like many of you have probably had lifetimes where you had to hide who you were. So spiritual gifts and so forth, where it might have been you know, in the Spanish Inquisition or something. And there's quite a bit of healing as a result you are meant to be doing in this life with, with Dura here. This is about nurturing and nourishing yourself and with the violet color to create a balanced life. That's going to be necessary. Part of it is to rejoice and lighten up. You've been through a lot. But I think the thing that's the challenge is that you also have some really significant relationship things that you'll be dealing with in this life. 
it is possible that in this life or in others you've been in some form of star-crossed relationship maybe where being who you were and being with the right person was not possible and you're healing from that or it may be that you have caregiving roles at the moment and then there's sort of an, another person around you and it's star-crossed and you feel like you can't have that you certainly draw attention to you, admirers to you, and you genuinely admire other people. You're one of those sort of very different people who likes what's different in other people. Because you're unconventional, you like, you like people, but people don't always understand you. And I think that it's had impacts on your love life. And I think it's also had impacts on when you were sort of being a caregiver or, or looking for nourishment. I think this is about learning to look after yourself and your own healing and so forth. By not always taking everything so seriously, you go deep emotionally when you go into relationships and it would be pointless for me to say don't. And in reality, I don't want to say that to you because it's part of what is fantastical and wonderful about you. You are like this werewolf. You are wild and different and free and, and moving with the emotions and with what you're drawn to and what you hunger for and dealing with the subconscious and all of those things. And as I say, from the basis of a very old soul and you are meant to be birthing something new, you need to go into that. You need to understand what that looks like. You need to be unconventional. It's just that I would love to be able to say to you it was going to be simple. But I think I think that this is this is why keeping your life and yourself healed is going to be so important because you will hit times when you're not understood. You will hit times where it may affect your relationships. But you are you. You can't be anything else. So let's use the tarot to get a little bit more information about the, the fantastical and wonderful and individual you. Then we're going to have a bit of a look at how best to honour that and also what you may not see. But first of all, just a little bit more information on this blueprint, which I think is, is very vital, but, but you know, not necessarily easy, I'm sorry to say. Yeah, this is showing. It, it is showing that part of what you're doing, because it's so different, it will it will go through its sort of intellectual battles. But you definitely have the power to be able to do it and the energy to do it. You can't get that degree of sort of sword energy, particularly the Queen and the Knight, without having the intellect to be able to deal with this. So part of it is it, you. But it's you seeing. This is what I feel like. It's the swords here. I feel are like. And it's all the agitation that comes with it, the new, the completely different way of looking at things, the end of a lot of other sort of like difficulties and, and energy depletion and so forth. In a world with seven of swords where things aren't necessarily what they seem, being able to navigate that thing and, and using this sort of quicksilver difference. But it's like at the moment, you haven't really worked out how to do that yet. That's why the Queen of Swords and the Knight of Swords are reversed. You're being a little bit more conservative and conventional, hiding that a bit. And being really self-critical. So it's important not to do that, to turn the criticism onto what it is that you're trying to change. Look at it differently. It's like you're sort of someone who at some point you'll have this aha moment. It's almost, as I say, it's almost like seeing another colour. But it's, it's you know, I think you will articulate it. I think with all those swords, it's sort of like the way that you will say something. You know, maybe you'll write, maybe you'll, you'll have a YouTube channel. It's something like that. You haven't yet fully understood what that is or made that decision. And I think part of it is you get a bit distracted on relationship energies. But I think once you work out what this new thing is, you can bring in the right admirer, the one who's going to understand you, as opposed to maybe energies where their old paradigm and your new paradigm but what is fantastic on you is not yet fully born, Palto. And I'm not saying that to, to give you a hard time. I'm saying that it's saying here that there's something in the way that you look at the world and, and focusing in on that will help you really work out what this change is that you're bringing in. But you do need to also work out where your energy is going and sort of balance that and so forth. So let's ask how you can best honour this. Again, it's swords energy. Swords energy really strongly here. You are meant to be, you're meant to sort of progress to the king of swords here. You're meant to progress to sort of the person with the new philosophy, the new political regime, the new novel that, that shifts people's concepts of things, the new filmmaker, whatever it might be, things that are in that kind of electrical realm. That is, that is ultimately where you should be. 
ultimately where you should be. So you've got to work out how issues around authority have boxed you in and issues around the conventional have boxed you in. I think that many of you have probably been very, very successful in things that you're doing in your career and so forth. And, and possibly you've also brought in you know, relationships that you enjoy and all that kind of thing. But something is like an itching under the skin that you know it's almost because you've been very clever at wearing the masks and, and doing what, you know, understanding the systems and fitting into the system. And what your soul, what your fantastical side is asking you to do is break out of that and become the new creator of a new system or a new approach. So it's pretty full on. Let's ask what you maybe don't see. Okay, what it's saying is that you don't see that this has been with you since you were a child. You, you were different right from the outset. If you were with siblings, you were different to your siblings. If in the schoolyard, you were different to your schoolyard, the whole thing. And very, very creative very, and very optimistic. It's like something's happened in fitting in with the world and maybe relationships that's made you less optimistic. It's like your, your innate childhood optimism and cleverness, you've sort of suppressed a bit, I think, to fit in or around relationships and so forth. But this is, you know, this is what the, why this is saying you don't have to be perfect, you just have to be you. It's, it's almost as though somewhere in your childhood you, you came in with this sort of innocence and happiness and optimism and all this cleverness and maybe it was suppressed. So whether it was by your family, whether it was by sibling rivalry, whether it was by school and work and all the things that do that. So your your fantastical self and spirit is asking you to remember that sort of innocent joy and, and precocity that you had even when you were young. I mean, and precocity when you're young can be many things. You may say, oh, but you know, I wasn't that good at school. And the thing around school, I mean, you can be very precocious at school and that can be a sign of certain types of learning and certain types of intelligence, just like an IQ test can show certain types of often culturally determined intelligence. But sometimes the people who don't do well at school are brilliant, you know, the neurodiverse and so forth. So you might be in that. I mean, someone who's neurodiverse is probably more likely to see the new colour before somebody who isn't, for instance. So it's, it's just something like that. It's owning that and remembering that that's important for you. So let's get you some help. Let's get you some supporters on the path. We're going to start firstly with a couple of divine animal totems for you. So we have jackal, which is about truth. Yeah, you are all about the truth, all this swords energy. Maybe you were a truth teller when you were young in your family or you've been a truth teller in a work organisation or something and you found that you had to kind of suppress that. But Jackal is here to get you back to that truth, that innocence, that very pure knowledge. We also have seahorse, equality. Okay, that's interesting. With star cross, with caregiver, with admirer. You probably are are very different and that and you understand the value of difference and so diversity and all those things that might be part of what you bring in something that's a little bit more legitimate for that there's a lot of lip service paid to diversity and organizations and all sorts of things when it really underneath the culture doesn't shift but i think for you you really are about bringing that changing because you truly are different and you can see that you have just as much to bring to the table as other people so you are open to other people as well this is this innocent open child i just feel like many of you have that squashed but it's there pile two it's there so let's give you a companion on from the lonely woods so this is meant to be an energy about when we're when we are feeling a bit alone like what what can sort of be a guiding energy or a guiding light or a comfort for us well this is interesting this came up for another one when all seems ended so I think that there will come a point, whether it's around a relationship, whether it's around something in your career, when just when you feel <clears throat> that you can't, you know, hold the mask anymore or, or that nobody's going to understand or something like that, that's when this energy is going to come through. That's, I think, maybe when an admirer comes through who does get it, who comes through and says, yes, I understand what you're saying. I can see the new world. So, and if you think about it, probably all the great inventors, all the great new thinkers had that moment, that moment when, am I going completely mad? Is everything I'm saying completely wrong? And then I think when, when you're at that point, that's when the energy will come in. So let's get you some goddess or archetype energy as well to support you. Easter. Oh, lovely. 
and Hera. Wow. So Easter is, is all about the new, all about the beautiful and the colourful, going back to the kind of lighten up a bit. It's going to come through for you. You're going to get the support that you need. And certainly calling on that goddess could help you if you were wanting to really get back to this feeling, this feeling from childhood. Hera, interestingly, of course, was the uh, wife of Zeus. So a bit of a, a long-suffering, star-crossed lover in a way. This could be saying that, you know, you've sometimes had issues around accountability, people's accountability for what they did in you know, workplaces or in relationships and so forth. Hera can be called upon for the strength to deal with that and to be able to cut through that. So I think Easter is an energy to bring in the new. Hera is an energy to level and leaven out the past when it hasn't been what it should have been. And to give you a sense that you are also able to take accountability and move forward in your own power around all of this, part two. So innocence and and wisdom kind of connected together as, as forces for you. So let's see how that manifests as your own personal magic. Alchemist. Once you understand the essence of everything is contained within everything, all things become possible. Yeah. An alchemist will turn base metal into gold, will bring the new in, will change the way that, that you see things, will spiritually purify. You need to understand yourself as that. It's like, it's interesting in alchemy after the negrado, which is where everything is burnt down into its elements to sort of purify, there is a process called the peacock, which is all the iridescent colours. And I keep getting colour around you. Some of you may be artists, but it's that new colour, a new colour that we, our eyes haven't seen yet. That's, that's the best allegory I can have for who you are and that fantastical part of you. Then we also have... Lovers, the ocean of love is unpredictable. Forgive yourself in every moment and open your heart to receive love. So there is something about relationship coming. I think there's an admirer coming in. I think you may have had relationships before where they didn't fully understand who you are. I think somebody is coming in who will, and that will really help you, I think, and, and bring back that optimism and that sense of new beginnings. Might make you think a little bit about the ones in the past with less than, than sort of favourable thoughts, but that's okay. You move into the optimism. I'm also going to pull a couple of cards from the decks around magic to see what other magic you have. Pull two. Mysticism. Mysticism and alchemist. Wow, you guys are really interesting. I have to say, I mean, as I say, I got the sense when I looked at this, this energy, I think it's coming in. I think you're one of a tribe that's coming in, to be frank. Very, very connected to the, the upper realms and so forth. And liberation. Yeah, free yourself. Free yourself from, from the constraints, the mental constraints you put around yourself. Because as I say, you've got to allow that energy to come in. You've got to climb that peach tree, peach blossom tree, to get to that sense of the soul's evolution. And you, of all people, should be able to do that, climbing the tree of life. Okay. So to finish off, I'm just going to get you some astrology or numerology energy, and then we're going to have a dragon butterfly from the Enchanted Blossoms deck to, to give the final synthesized note for your fantastical self so firstly some astrology or numerology around you and this one flicked out so we're going to have it third house how you communicate with the world your voice yeah it's something about your voice it's something about what you say it's something about what you think mercury mercury as a god very strong energy for you as well we have Oh my goodness, 11, the mysticism. Many of you, you know, like if you don't know about the Kabbalah, I'd suggest finding out about it because I think you're very connected to that. But that certainly is the sort of master, uh, sort of spiritual number, connecting all of those things. It's also the number, I understand, of the god Janus, which is the god of doorways, moving through the new beginnings and endings. So that all lines up. And... Descendant, relationship. There's a relationship that's going to be key to this. So if you aren't in that yet, one is coming in. It, it, it's going to be part of what really is part of the breakthrough. Okay, so let's just finish with a dragon butterfly to give an energy to synthesize this together around what is fantastical, wonderful, and unique about you, Pile 2. Truth. Oh, and we had the, you know, going back to, well, this is a very important, very important animal totem for you then, the jackal. Very strongly connected to Egyptology. You might want to look into that as well too. But truth, this, you are bringing in something new. That's what the new is, you know, bringing in the truth, cutting through some of the sort of 
old paradigm that's got calcified and isn't isn't really working anymore to something that can be true and, and takes us to the next level. So you've got a mission, but I think you're going to have the right partner and I think you're really going to start to see it. You've just got to lighten up and get back to your sort of optimism pole too. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments about it, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So with the Four of Wands Kitsune card, it's, it's you know, we are using Kitsune, uh, Kitsune Oracle as well too. We have that sort of sense of family and connection that goes with the Four of Wands anyway. And as I said in the introduction, a sense of relationship. And the thing that's interesting in this, Pile 3, is what is fantastical about you is going to change to something else fantastical. <laughs> A lot of this is your capacity to transform, but but what I'm seeing here, and part of this is very mystical, you have a very mystical sort of spiritual sense, and you're able to see when you need to change and how to change. But what I see here is the 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 fundamental you, the fundamental what is different, fantastical, is all about freedom, is all about travel, is all about movement. You love to expand your mind, you love to travel, you love to be in the world, and if you aren't able to do that, you do it, as I say, in your mind. You do it through learning and so forth. You, you probably do it through astral travel, all of those things. You are one of life's voyagers, one of life's explorers. You would be a Christopher Columbus. You would be someone like that who would go out and look into what else the world has to offer, often in uncharted territory, what is new and so forth. And as such, you're very philosophical, but very freedom oriented. You like to know that you can travel. You like to know that you can move. You like to know that things are unfettered because you are a dreamer. You have trances, you have visions, you can see what is coming in, but you're also seeing what's coming in for you now. And you do have the capacity to change. As a shapeshifter, you inherently have the capacity to change and fit into environments. And this is part of what's wonderful and fantastical about you. Wherever you might travel in the world, you could fit in with the culture. Whatever kind of people you were dealing with, you could fit in with and, and understand them and shapeshift in and out without it really touching your immortal, free, very independent soul. But the threshold that's coming for you is to move into a relationship because you you know transformation is coming and you know that really amazing energy you have along those lines and the, the basic calling for freedom is about to move into a willing entanglement so it's you can choose and because of this amazing energy you have to move and change you could do it for a time or you could do it for a long time you could do it for the rest of this life but possibly the next life it's it's something else so you you can see it as a new voyage of discovery but it is with another it is where you are connecting to another and you are relinquishing some of this freedom because it is so innate to you and your visionary sort of capacity to travel is such that you can do it and it's on a 3D level with having fun with your inner child and rejuvenating your body, getting into passion. It is about following the passion side of things in a different way. So, Pile 3, if you're not in a relationship, I reckon you're going to be in one. If you are in one, it's moving to a different level where you are committing on some other level that maybe you've never really done before. Even, even if you have technically committed, it's almost as though there's a sense of settling into something, saying, yes, this is the one at least... You know, maybe it's your soul twin, maybe it's your divine counterpart. Any of those things could be the case. But there's definitely a sense of finding the other, being with the other, and in a way understanding then that that is its own form of freedom, that you were free and very much a a lone wolf in a way. Even if you've had relationships, you had that kind of almost one foot out the door always, not because you didn't care or love, but because it's in your nature. But you are you are moving into that. If you haven't already, you are moving into that. And you can sense it because you're psychic, because you can see what's coming and you can feel it on a bodily level. There might even be a sort of sense of, I don't have the energy to go and travel again now. I actually just want to sort of like hang out with my friends because that's how you're going to meet the person. There's sort of something like that. Or having fun with your inner child, it might be going, I just want to kind of do fun things now and, and hang out with my friends and do fun things. And that's what brings it in. But it's it, you kind of psychically know it's coming in. That's part of what's fantastical about you. But but it's your capacity to shape shift and make a choice to be entangled as opposed to just kind of falling into it because your nature is so free. So let's get a little bit more detail about this fantastical side of you from the tarot.
So I have to say that I think most of the people, if you've come to the right reading, you've you've kind of not necessarily not had relationships, but you haven't put a huge premium on them to date. You know, like they were maybe sort of fun and, and a good time or whatever. But but you know, you weren't really sort of someone who was out to find the partner. You you were, you felt very much within yourself. You know, I you know, and, and I'm a, a lone wolf, as I say. I travel. I move. You know. Um, that kind of sense about it, and so you, and that is part of who you are. You're not, you're not romantic in the sense of I must give up everything for everybody because that's what you do in society, and that's the romance story. If you willingly entangle, it's because you know it's the right thing for you. You know that it's part of following your life path. You know it's following your north star. So you've kind of suppressed some of that side of things for looking at you know all the journeying and so forth, and right from childhood with the six of cups there. You've always wanted to. You might have been one of those kids that if your parents didn't watch them, you were off down the street really fast. Not because you were trying to be difficult, but because it's just this sort of sense of exploration and so forth. And so I think many people might even see you as someone who's largely alone and very much spiritual as opposed to sort of in passion and, and somebody who wants to explore and learn and, and so forth. But something's coming, definitely. And, and it will connect back to, to that sense of adventure. This is someone who, with the inner child, will have that same sense as you. I think they're, they're, they're partners in crime, not literally crime, but they're people who have a similar sort of thing. That's why you could get entangled, because you would both know how to give each other space and you would probably want to explore together. So, so this is sort of finding the right person and making the right decision. But the, the beauty, the fantastic thing about you, the unusual thing about you, is that you are so much making that choice. So many people I know, when they're very romantic and they put a lot of store by that, when you talk to them about the people they meet, they always talk about all the signs that that person loves them. What they don't tend to talk about is what they love in the person as much because they're looking for the validation. You're not looking for the validation of someone else. If you're going to get entangled, you have to know that you want to get entangled. And it's finding that right partner, which is wonderful. It's a beautiful energy for the right relationship in the end, Pile 3. So let's ask how you best honour this, this sort of inner explorer who also will shape shift and, and get entangled under the right circumstances. How do you best honor that energy and that difference? So this is look what this is really saying is you honour it because you're not allowing yourself to get entrapped by all the concepts about what it is to be in relationships. Like you, you almost dispute them. You'd almost sort of say, I mean, if, probably nobody would see you as a romantic, as I say. Or if you are a romantic, it's in a very different way to other people. It's like you, you don't, and you're not, you don't care to some degree if other people find you attractive, though I think they do. I think they definitely do. But it's almost like you kind of go, what? You know, what's all that about? Because you kind of, it's not part of what you're honouring is not putting your self-esteem in that space or, or making your decisions based on relationships. It's, it's, it's you not being entrapped in any way. You won't be. You just won't be. And if you, as I say, you'd only make it a willing thing. And I think it would be with a similar person to you. So it's, it's you know, you honour it by not... By not thinking, and also by not thinking when this one comes along, that you have to somehow suppress all of that sort of stuff. Don't get trapped in that kind of thing. You know, understand that that you are still you, and you are still wonderful, and you have you have found your other fox, really, so to speak. Let's see what you maybe don't see or don't know about your fantastical self. Okay, well, this is very specific. You were the sort of person who people will try and do love spells on or something like that. You were the sort of person who people feel very much the separation from and that you, you do make people feel a bit insecure sometimes. So it's like, I don't think it will be this person that is right for you because they're right for you. But I think maybe in relationships, you, you have made people feel worried and insecure to some degree and they may have wanted to try and influence you in some way. They want to try and get you to commit before you're ready to commit and all that sort of thing. And, and that is coming from this sort of explorer energy that you give. And, and to you, you see, it would just seem really weird because to you it would be all like, I'm with you for when I enjoy being with you. I don't know why you want to have all these discussions about commitment and so forth. But a lot of people are a lot more, their, their pain around this is a lot more at the surface. For you, it's, it's 
the exploration and the new and the freedom is what you're about. And when you find this person, I think you'll find a person like you. So it's almost like you kind of skip that part in the relationship book. You know, it's like it, it, it doesn't even compute with you. But because of that, people may try to manipulate you because they're worried, they're feeling insecure. They think that they could be in pain around you. So so just understanding that I think is helpful because it's not it's not going to matter with the right person, but it may matter with other people around you. And I don't think you're the sort of person who wants to hurt anybody, but I just don't think you think of it in those terms. You're kind of on the exploration and the dream. They're, they're a little bit more 3D oriented and wanting to, you know, have the relationship, the white picket fence, all of that kind of thing. Okay. So given the, it's a little bit of a relationship energy to navigate so that, so that you can be yourself but not hurt anybody or mislead them in any way. Let's see what divine animals and other supports and companions can help you, Pile 3. So firstly, a couple of animal totems for you. We have hair. Cycles. So this is probably saying that, you know, these things go through cycles and even, even part of this, like your kind of exploration, maybe sometimes you kind of seem to settle down and people think that's fine and then you sort of get excited to do something else and you make them feel insecure. I don't think it's going to be with the person that's right for you, but I think it might be understanding those cycles of when you need to do the new and when you need to escape and how you need to defrag in a way, like what's going on with that. I think hair will help you with that. And... Tiger, Will, oh, yeah. Actually, I don't think, Tiger's with you, but I don't think you need a lot of help from Tiger. I think you've got a really strong willpower. I think it's understanding. It's the gentle side of Tiger then. It's it's understanding that, that your will and your clarity is there and it's always going to be there and it's the right thing to follow, but understanding the impact on other people, I think. You're probably quite intense, you know, and people kind of enjoy the intensity when it's focused on them and then you go off and you focus on someone else and it freaks people out like, Where's this person gone? So just just be aware of that. There's a very there's a very focused, strong energy that you have. Let's get something from Into the Lonely Woods. So this deck looks at sort of companionship energy and so forth. And there is a degree to which our fantastical self is always going to be a bit lonely because it's fantastical. So what do we get for you, Pile 3? The communion of tender souls. I think it's saying, look, you are going to find the person. And there is going to be a great deal of tenderness between you and them. But I think it's also saying to you, be aware of these people, the other people around you that aren't really the ones for you. They've got tenderness too. So just thinking about that. It's not I don't think you're gonna like, you know, build up a whole heap of bad karma or anything, but I think you wouldn't want to. You are actually quite a tender person underneath. But but it's just that you're so focused on on sort of the next step, the next sort of travel, the next adventure and so forth. I do think when this comes in, though, you're going to actually start to understand why some people were were kind of, you know, a bit insecure around you. Not that I think you're going to be insecure around this person, but I think you'll start to have that real feeling of it, like what that feels like. Okay, so let's also get you a couple of either goddesses or archetype energy to, to call on if you need, as you sort of own and honour your fantastical self. Carly, wow. And Ixchel. Okay, these two together with hair is putting another interesting, interesting sort of layer of complexity on this. For some of you, you may already be in a relationship, but you may still travel and do a lot, and then there could be a lot of freedom in that relationship. Or you be, could be coming across a willing entanglement. But I think that this is also talking about, you know, a child. I think for some of you, this is with Excel, which is about childbirth, new beginnings and so forth. And then Kali, which is about the cycles of time and when certain things need to end to bring in something else, the threshold. This feels like for some of you, that might be specific, but I think it could be quite a few that have come to this reading. There is a threshold you're moving through where your freedom loving nature is going to be tenderly reined in a bit by your own choice and willingly because the cycle is now to... to nurture another so that's interesting that's now coming out for some of you it will be moving into a relationship and and it's sort of like the new emotional sort of connections of the new birth not a literal person and this is the time for it but for others of you i think some of your freedom loving sort of nature is going to now be prepared to to be sublimated through through a child 
or as I say, a very significant relationship. But this this has added another complexion to it. It kind of makes a bit more sense now about what is fantastical and wonderful in you and why it is going through a willing change. This is about family or nurturing in some way. And if it isn't having a child of your own, it may be that you are taking on some sort of role where you are going to nurture others and where you need to be there for a longer cycle than you possibly would have been before. Okay, and that's actually quite beautiful, I have to say. Let's have a look at some magic energy that you bring to this fantastical self and to this transition I think you're going through, Pile 3. Why speak? Your words are your vibration. Authentic communication opens the voice of clarity and wisdom. So this is how to deal with some of this sort of like swords energy. Being honest, being truthful, you know, saying your truth. And that, you know, when you are willing to make these commitments or make these transitions, make that clear. Because I do think there's something a little bit in you that is so energetic and so freedom and so much of that vibration that you could make people feel insecure even when they have no need to be. And we also have rainbow energy and it's chill with the rainbow the colors of the universe live within you radiate their brilliance there's something about difference as well it's a different relationship or a child as i say or a different you know how to nurture people to be freer in some way to be true to who they are something in that space you're going through this threshold you're doing it willingly but it is shifting part of your core nature so let's have a look at what magic you can bring to it. So two different decks with magic energy. Detox, cleanse and restore yourself. And that kind of came up at the beginning. So I think that you know this is this is really looking at you know what energy is going to be right for this shift, this change in what your focus is. And higher self yeah, you're getting in connection with that. And I think this is also your higher self saying, you know what, you may be sort of settling down in some way into a relationship, into parenthood, into some sort of job that's nurturing and longer term, all of that kind of thing. But you still have your higher self. You can still, with your mystical abilities, your sort of capacity with the Fae there, you can actually still travel on a kind of astral level. So you don't need to feel like you're giving up the keys to the the car, so to speak. There is still the capacity for travel, movement, freedom, all of those sort of things, regardless of this. Okay, so to finish off pile three, I'm just going to get you some astrology or numerology energy, and then we're going to ask a deck with dragon butterflies, because that's pretty fantastical, about what the sort of synthesizing energy is. So firstly, some astrology or numerology energy around your fantastical, unique self. Solar eclipse, oh, that's interesting. First quarter, Venus, yeah, okay. Because solar eclipse can be where you have to kind of put your own needs and your own sort of pathway to the side or, or let it be eclipsed by something else. I just think that this is there is a shift in your fantastical nature that you will willingly make. The first quarter moon allows you to start to manifest what those intentions are and see what it is. And Venus, it has to do with love. It's got to do with love. Love of another, love of a child, love of people that you're nurturing, love of a new new sort of thing, that you, you know, work thing that you're going to commit yourself to, something like that. And, that. and that is what is allowing you to do this and picking up the shape-shifting thing. You are more than capable. It's part of what's wonderful in you. You're more than capable of doing this. And you know that you can shape-shift back after you've done this because things go in cycles. But you will do it, and it's a beautiful thing. So let's see what the dragon butterflies have for a final message for you. Happiness. Yeah, beautiful, because you deserve that, I think, because I think you are genuinely going to make a little bit of a sacrifice here on your normal nature for love of someone else or for a love of a group of people. It's, I actually feel a bit emotional now looking at this. I just sort of see this as, as paying it forward into the generations and, and knowing when the right time is to do that. And then later your spirit will be free again. It's, it's not that your intrinsic fantastical nature is changing. It's just that part of your capacity to change has this enormous generosity of spirit, and that is what is going to now take you across the threshold to the willing entanglement. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 3. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 4, to your reading. So we have Loch Ness Monster here as Nessie for the Six of Cups. So that is is 
possibly what drew you to the reading and certainly would sort of pick up that sort of sense here of nostalgia. And nostalgia is part of this, but it's in a very particular way. Part of your fantastical nature is you have a suspicion of destiny and you're not wrong. So there's some destiny and it's connected to your past. It's likely to make you very well known with famous here, at least at some level in your community or organisation or whatever. But for many of you, it may be much bigger than that. But part of part of you, you, you kind of can look back into the past, understand the past with, with incredible detail, actually. Some of you may be historians or, or kind of almost you know, forensic detectives into the past cold cases and things like that. But it's it's for you primarily about weaving your own destiny. There is a destiny that is around you and you've been building to it through past lives and, and understanding the past lives that you connect to and the periods in history that you connect to because this card talks about that. It has a Victorian kitsune, a you know, Victorian sort of era kitsune. It sort of say there's something around past traditions, past literature, past, you know, spiritual practices, whatever it is, that is connecting to your sense of destiny, what you're meant to do, and which will give you the sense of rituals and honor offerings that are necessary to bring that into being. And you will find a guide. Now, whether or not that guide is a person, whether it's a spiritual guide, or whether it's something in the history books in some way that is a guide to you, the golden unicorn is saying, you're not going to operate alone with this. Information will come to you. Some of it will come very psychically because of the Pisces energy, but some of it also comes from your own research. There's something about you you are able to research. You'd be one of those sort of people who could almost open a book and find what it was that you were looking for. There's a kind of a mix of psychic and, and intellectual acuity in you. And with the energies of the colors, we have allow flow and synchronicity into your life. Synchronicity is going to show you the patterns, the patterns that existed before that are relevant to your fate now and are relevant to what you will be known for. You will be able to see that and pick that up with a high degree of acuity. And we've got revitalize your nervous system. It is going to have a pretty big platform, I think, in some way. So you are part of what you're also meant to be guided and to, to have rituals for, uh, for your own health and so forth. So there's something about you, nostalgic in the past, understanding the past, creating your own future and going into a destiny going into something that you have been building for over past lives. So you have a purpose. One of the things that is fantastical about you compared to the average person is you, you truly do have a purpose. You're not sort of just kind of like working out, well, what are my sort of wounds from life now that I need to heal and what's my next sort of you know, step on an ascension path? This is There is something deep-rooted, and, and I think that some of it has been shown up in your childhood as well. There's an interesting book I sometimes mention, in readings, both private and also, I think I've mentioned it in collective as well, by a man called James Hillman, who was a American sort of psychotherapist and philosopher. And it's called The Soul's Code. And it talks about how he shows all these case studies to show when you're a child, you often, your, your higher self knows what it wants to be. And it will show up in things that you do, things that you you want to learn very quickly, ways that you want to be in the world. And that the best thing that parents can do is is honour that rather than try and suppress it. So it may be if you think about who did you want to be when you were young? And if you wanted to be, you know, the next big sort of TV sensation, then that's probably what you're going to be. If you wanted to be the, the next person to break an Olympic record, that's probably what you're going to be. This is There's, there's something about this and you brought it in. So so it's it's owning that, I think, that's important. So let's get some more information from Tarot about your fantastical self, pile four. Okay. So firstly, it's really interesting that I got like break an Olympic record or something. There's something about breaking through competition, the restraints of competition before and, and what made it hard. So there's something that you're going to be able to do that is so easy to you compared to other people. There's that whole thing, I'm sure you will have heard of it, that, that sort of says whether it's a form of morphic resonance where things sort of pop up all over the world at the same time or whether it's something else. But they sort of say things like, you know, when somebody broke the, the sort of like one minute mile record or whatever or, or made the one minute mile for the first time or whatever it was they said it, you know, everybody said it couldn't be done but once someone did it then others could do it there's something about that I think there's something that you're going to do 
whether it's literally on the world stage or whether it's just around people that you're with, that's going to break through previous limitations. But how you're doing it is that you are looking at it joyfully as something to go towards and you're seeing the material way of doing it. And that's partly where your understanding of the past and this almost forensic understanding about fate isn't just sort of what we feel in our kind of intuition it, it's something that we weave into being it's something that we plan for it's something that we train for it's something that we that we have a, a you know five-step program to get to but we love doing it it also makes me think of again I think I've mentioned this maybe before a particular movie I saw where there was a character talking to somebody who's very competitive at university and saying you know true winners you know like they don't they're not thinking about winning the race. They just love to run. So there's sort of something about that. There's something of that in you, I think. And it's, and you will break through competition that wasn't wasn't valid. And you will break through where there were burdens before and, and release people's belief. You know, people will believe a bit more in something. So that's rather beautiful. Let's sort of see how you can best honour this unique and fantastical side of you. Oh my goodness, you guys, I tell you what. I got radical love here, transformational love. And that doesn't have to be, you know, a romance, so it could be. But it's I think it's the love you have for whatever this is. And you've been doing it for many lives. You're, you're like the consummate weaver. You've been weaving a beautiful, beautiful tapestry that will, will take something to this whole other level. You're, you're like the break, you know, crash through or crash, but you're not going to crash. You know, you just eat that bravery and that love and that certainty of the love and that, that you can, you can, you can do your destiny. You can bring it in. You are like this firebird or like a phoenix, you know, even, even if things don't work the first time, they're going to work in the end. You know, honoring it is just owning that love for what you do, that sense that the transformation is necessary and that you really are the master of your fortune. Like that belief People will follow you, people will understand, all of that kind of thing. But like, what they won't know is the depth of intellect behind it. They won't know the depth of spiritual connection. They won't know how you did it. But it's something like something you do, then others will be able to do simply because you did it. Like it's pretty full on, powerful, pretty good. Let's see what you don't know. Because you go deep, you know quite a lot about this. But what don't you know? What could be worth you knowing and seeing? Okay, so what you don't sometimes see is that you're very sympathetic to other people and sometimes their lack of belief saps your strength. So again, it goes back to that sort of thing. Everybody said there couldn't be a one-minute mile and then somebody did it and then people could do it. It's sort of like it's the one thing to be aware of. Because of the Pisces, you are a bit of an emotional sponge. You will pick up a lot of things from people. And I think for some of you, it may even have been from childhood. It could have been that your parents' expectations, your family expectations were lesser than what you could do. They wouldn't even have seen it. You'd be typically sort of someone who may have come from one level of you know, societal structure within your family and you are likely to then get to the next level. It's something that, that hasn't been done in your family before, but then opens the door for the rest of your family. It's it's really interesting. It's it's the one thing is to, to just know that, that linking in too much to other people's opinions stops whatever this is. You have to you have to just research it, go into you because you're the one who's gonna do it, Pile Four. Really interesting energy. So let's see what support you get. Let's get you a couple of divine animal totems and then a couple of other sort of decks that can give some support for you when you're doing this groundbreaking thing because that's what's fantastical about you. You're going to do something groundbreaking and it's your destiny. You are going to do it. So let's see what divine animal totems can help you. Gorilla, peace. Yeah, have peace. Big, strong gorilla. You're big and strong. Have peace. Don't get caught up in this, you know. Have peace and understanding and and just enjoy it. Love it. Love what you're doing because it's going to it's going to sort of open doors that people wouldn't have even imagined before. And then also beaver, work and just do the work. Just do the work. Trust it. Do the work. Weave the web. Do what it is that you're meant to do. You know, be dedicated to it. But make sure it's something you love, something you really want to do, because then nothing can stop you. 
Let's have a look from a deck that has sort of energies for people on a lonely path because when we are really honouring our fantastical self, sometimes it can feel a bit lonely and you may feel that sometimes because you may be sort of so far out ahead of the pack and people don't see it until you do the breakthrough. So what energy might help you with that, Paul? Your little island. I love that. So there you are on your island looking at the, the star. Yeah, you and you're higher you're higher than others others won't see this yet but there's a certain peace in that as well too i feel like that's almost like the baby gorilla in a way looking at the star knowing knowing you're following your star there'd be something in your chart i think i wouldn't be surprised if uranus was very strong um the sun maybe even saturn actually because of of bringing something new into form breaking through things maybe uranus and and, and saturn are pretty, pretty strongly connected in your chart don't have to be, but that's the kind of energy that I'm seeing there. Maybe also Neptune too with the Pisces sort of thing, the inspiration. Okay, let's get you a goddess, a couple of goddesses or a goddess and an archetype to also help you with this groundbreaking fantastical self that you are. Oh, Paul. Santa Murto, wow. And Easter, lovely. So I think these ones are here to help you on almost what happens after you've had the groundbreaking thing. Santa Murta is about things end, things shift, things change. Once, once, as I say, the one minute mile was done, that was no longer the goal. There's a new goal after that. And so you need to find a new goal with Easter, a new thing to be joyous about, a new part of your destiny to weave. It's the first step. It's not the only step, I think, is what these are saying. Santa Murta also talks about looking after your own health and so forth. And there is a bit of that around these rituals and offerings. So you, you work hard and you, you are at peace and you love what you do, but you do also need to look after your own bodily you know, and sort of energetic level. So I think Santa Murta is there to help you do that, to go through the cycles of that so that you're only releasing and letting go of that which is no longer serving you and to bring in the new with Easter. Easter always just makes me think too of just like beautiful beginnings. This is such a sense of liberation that you can bring in. So let's see some spiritual support that you have or spiritual aspects of your fantastical being for for. Guardian. The guardian stands at the threshold of your progress. May your doors, paths and gates be open. I think that's going back to the golden unicorn. There's something watching over you. There is some importance to this. It will be known in some way. As I say, that for everybody, that could be a different level. But this is, this is going to make a difference. This is shifting people's perceptions, including your own. But you're kind of, you can feel it coming before other people can. And this guardian is watching over it to make sure that you can cross the threshold. And then we have Muse, you're a source of inspiration. Yeah, you will be because you're going to shift the dial. Become the muse of your own life and breathe imagination into your soul. Believe in what you can do. Don't listen to the sort of like, oh, it can't be really done that way type of sense that I think other people who are a bit more emotionally stuck might say to you. You do have the support and you are, when you do this, people are going to look at whatever this is differently. It's really quite exciting. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at some magic within you to help as well from a couple of different decks. So, learn, okay, and detox, that came up for another group. There is something here, there is something that there's an endurance aspect to what you're doing, I think. There's something maybe physical about it or you just need all your physical energy to be really focused on what you are enjoying and what you want to bring in learning says that there are some things that you can learn i think this is the research there's something i think it's research into history to understand you and the pathway that you've had before and, and the knowledge that you've brought in and what rituals and offerings might help with all of this learning what it is what are the supposed parameters around this because you're going to break them so you need to learn that. You need to really understand your subject matter. The more that you do, the easier it's going to be. It's like that concept of mastery where you do 10,000 hours and then you become a master. Something like that. But, but you're going to take it beyond that, as I say. But you need to have that foundation as well. But you, more than anyone, can do that quickly and get right to the depths with that kind of forensic detective type of aspect to what you do. So let's... 
finish up with some astrology and numerology and then I'm also using the Enchanted Blossoms deck as a final card because it's got dragon butterflies and I thought what's more beautiful and fantastical than a dragon butterfly <laughs> so it seemed like the perfect deck to finish with but let's just first of all just get some some either numerology or astrology energy around your fantastical self pile four square we'll have a look at the, the planets third house very much you're going to need to communicate what this is. You need to get it out into the world. And first quarter, set your intentions. Know what this is. You know, do your research. Again, that forensic sort of great mind or whatever. Work out what the patterns are. Start to communicate your intentions. Square. It's almost like I feel like that's not necessarily saying it to the world, though I do think the world's going to see it. I think it's more that you articulate it. I am going to, you know, break the next world record on X or whatever it is. Square is action, and action is important. Work is important. So let's see what the planets are that are calling you to action. I'll just deal that till I get planets. Chiron. So one of them is about healing healing in some way this is why we've got the rituals and offerings or whatever it could be a breakthrough around some form of healing emotional psychic spiritual whatever it might be or it might be that and black moon lilith okay actually i think what this is it's not telling us what the actual thing is because i suppose it's going to be so different for everybody i think what it's saying is this is about this ritual and offerings and about the detoxing and about what the guardian is helping you with, calling you to action to make sure that you heal within yourself so you don't become obsessed with other people's viewpoints and obsessed with the thing, that you keep this in balance, that you feel healed and balanced and at peace using gorilla's energy while you go through. Because I feel like you might might feel quite pressured around some of it. So I think this is just calling you to action to also look after your own self and your own energy levels. Okay, so to finish up, let's just get a dragon butterfly message for you. Compassion. So, that's interesting. Given that I think you're going to break through things, I think you need to have compassion for yourself and keep that in balance. Don't feel that everything's about this and that's the only thing that matters. You could get a bit obsessive. <laughs> you are going to succeed. You don't need to be obsessive about it. So compassion for yourself. But there may also be compassion for others, those that haven't been able to do this, those that have maybe been naysayers. Understand that they're coming from a different level of, of knowledge about all of this. And you will, and, and when you win, it's, it's really like, you know, the kind of be the really good winner because you're going to win at something. And then being compassionate with those that didn't understand before, I think that's important. Uh, and, and, you know, for some of you, it may be in something where compassion becomes part of, of what it is that is the breakthrough. But you'll be well known. You'll be, you'll be seen as a winner, I think. And, and as I say, being a good winner is probably even more honourable than being a, a good loser in many ways. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 4. I think you're going to do some really interesting things. And, you know, I wish you well with all of it and would love to hear about it <laughs> when it happens. But beyond that, uh, I hope that if you like the video, you'll like it and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you care to share, tell me what you thought in the comments. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings.